My name is Sam Anderetu, the Executive Director of the Groba Intensive Agriculture Centre of Kenya, GBIAC. I advocate for clean, healthy, fair and affordable food, which is um, organically grown. And uh, my work is to train farmers and to empower smallholder farmers in our country, Kenya. And we are situated in um, Pika sub-county, uh, um, in Kiambu County, um, in a place called Muguga. We are developing a center where farmers come to train and to get the knowledge in agricultural production and especially the agroecological uh, practices that are healthy to the environment. I want to talk about seeds and the seeds are one of the most important, important components when it comes to agricultural production and the food, food production in general. Um, as we know, farmers cannot grow food without, without seeds and that's a fact. The fact is, seed is one of the most important things that are needed for us to eat. Without seeds, there's no food. Without food, uh, seed security, there's no food security. And therefore, I want to uh, stress on how farmers should save their seeds, how they should grow their seeds. And I'm not just talking about seeds. I'm talking about indigenous, open pollinated, the higher loom varieties that are ours, not imported seeds. Talking about imported seeds, these are hybrids and genetically modified organisms which are not good for us. We as Kenyans, I believe that we have enough sufficient seeds that um, we can be able to grow enough food for everyone without borrowing food from outside. And the trend has been since um, independence, Kenya has been having a lot of food. In fact, we have even been uh, giving food to our neighboring countries like, um, you know, these neighboring countries like Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi. We gave them food. But currently, after the introduction of hybrids and, 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 and synthetic chemicals, Kenya has become so poor that they are now borrowing food or getting food from outside. We are even getting eggs and chicken from outside the country. That's a big shame. The introduction of the Green Revolution in the 1960s was aimed at increased food production using high yield varieties and agricultural chemicals which are industrially made. However, the Green Revolution brought in a lot of disadvantages like environmental harm through the use of harmful and hazardous chemicals. Also, it is the biggest cause of climate change and it has made agricultural production to be very expensive because of the high prices of agricultural inputs. It has also created resistance of pests and diseases. Smallholder farmers have, however, realized that the continuous use of chemicals and industrial seeds are the major causes of food decline in the country. Farmers are now in dire need of cheaper, yet the best indigenous technologies that will reverse the scenarios of reduced food production to a scenario where sustainable food production will be restored. buy seeds at the agrovet, they sell us hybrid seeds, which are not organic. The vegetable you see here, like amaranth, is not grown anymore. Instead, at the market, people unknowingly buy hybrid varieties. 
We get to live to our 70s because we grow our own organic food. Most of the time, when the rains come, farmers don't have seeds. So they'll, they'll wait until they get money to go to the agro so that they buy hybrid seeds or even genetically modified organisms, which is not good. That's not a good practice. A good practice is where farmers will be able to save their own seeds. It doesn't matter how, how much or what type of seeds, but the seeds that they, they have grown, they know that that's their seeds. They save them somewhere in a corner or in a seed bank or in an in a, in a organized um, store somewhere so that when the rains come, the seeds are right there, ready to be put on the ground so that now they are able to grow their food. But the trend has been farmers having to wait until the rain has gone and that's where they get money to go to the agro beds. So we want to revert and help farmers to change that notion that it's only hybrids that can give them food, that it's only GMOs that can, that can give them food. If you visit our farmers, you'll find out that um, farmers that have grown hybrids versus the farmers that have grown open pollinated high end varieties, there's no comparison. Because our farmers that are growing our own seeds, indigenous seeds, are able to grow food, are able to produce food, they're able to harvest, as opposed to the ones that have grown hybrids. Why? Climate change, it has come with a lot of impact, negative impact. There's not enough rain, and therefore, when you grow uh, the, the, the industrialized seeds, industrial seeds, using industrial chemicals, then they require a lot of rain, they require a lot of water for them to grow, to germinate, and to, to put in seeds and put in food. But our indigenous foods are able to, um, they are drought resistant, and therefore, farmers in the end, they'll be able to grow food and say that, yes, we, are, we, have, we have food, we have enough food for ourselves, for the family, and for the country. So why can't our farmers embrace our own seeds? The thing is, our farmers have been brainwashed. They have been brainwashed by multinational companies. They tell them that it's only the imported seeds, imported seeds that can grow food, which is not right. It is not correct. Our indigenous food, like cassava, like sweet potatoes, like indigenous maize, indigenous beans, um, uh, you know, all those crops, our bananas, they are able to grow food sufficient enough for the family, sufficient enough for the, for, the, for the country. And therefore, I believe and I strongly believe that organic farming using indigenous seeds can be able to feed this country and feed the country very well. No lies that it's only industrial chemicals and industrial seeds can feed the country. That's a big lie. It is our own seeds. It is our own um, knowledge, in this indigenous knowledge that will give us food that will make us rich. My name is Mary Njoki from the GBX Seed Department. Our seed department has indigenous seeds like beans, maize, soya beans, herbs, lab lab, amaranth, and cowpeas. These are the seeds we use to train and give out to farmers. So, as like GBAC, we do exchange of seed. Kwa farmers, when you na kuanga na wao, wana tuletea, na sisi tunawape, zenye tukonazo. Na, ukiagalia kwa hii seed bank yetu, kuna vile tunajaribu kuweka begus yetu, we store our seeds in airtight tins and cylinders. And that's why we are able to work with these cylinders. And still, with seed bank, we are preserve. We use organic preservatives for our seeds, like cow dung ash, sisal, tephrosia, and pepper. Academic and program, academic and training program coordinator, 
e, nitazungumzia kuhusu mambo na changamoto za wakulima zenye wanapata kupitia hizi mbegu zetu za kiasili. Kumekuwa na shida e, shida nyingi sana kuhusu mbegu za kiasili. Sababu moja ni kwamba hatuna idhini ya kukua na hizo mbegu e, kwa sababu hatuna kibali kutoka kwa serikali. Lakini pia tunapata pia changamoto ya hizo mbegu zimepotea. Hizi zimepotea kwa ajili ya hizi kampuni kubwa kubwa zenye zinatengeneza mbegu, hizi e, mbegu za hybrids zimekuja na utaalamu wake na zime zimefanya wakulima kuondoka kwa zile asili yao ya kuhifadhi mbegu zao za kiasili ambapo kume, kumefanya kutokuwa na kutokuwepo na zile mbegu zetu za kiasili ambazo zimepotea na ndio tunazitafuta kwa sahizi. so wakulima wengi wamepata na hizo changamoto kwa sababu ya zile changamoto ambazo tunapata e, ubishano wa kampuni mbalimbali za mbegu ambazo zimekuja na zinakuja na ma, mambo mengi kuhusu hizo aina ya mbegu ambazo zinasemekana zina zinaistahimili zina wadudu na tumepata e, mo, moja mbili tatu ya wana wakulima ambao wametumia hizo hizo mbegu wamesema zina, zinapata magonjwa kwa, kwa haraka sana na ukiangalia sana hizo mbegu e, wanakosa kuzirudisha tena wakati mwingine e, kwa sababu aziwezi e, toa mazao ambayo ilikuwa ya awali ambayo iliyekwa ili kwa sababu ya, ya wale wataalamu ambao waliwaelezea so I'm calling Stibole I work with Global Intensive Agriculture Center of Kenya where we are right now and uh, I want to talk about th this, our local variety maize. This is central Kenya. We have tried planting different varieties of maize. And this is a, a, maize, variety behind, a maize variety from western Kenya, uh, known as Nampanane. It does very well here, and it does good with the climatic conditions that are here. Uh, people who planted uh, hybrid maize this season have nothing to harvest because too much too much heat and the hybrid varieties cannot survive in that in that heat and also because of these climate changes now it's it's better to go for open pollinated varieties than the the hybrid varieties which are not bringing any any harvest so i will urge farmers to start saving their local varieties, to start looking where they went, to start searching for them, so that they start planting them. Farmers have indigenous knowledge on how to identify and to select the type of seeds that they want. They have in the past grown their food using the heirloom open pollinated seeds. <laughs> Watu ya zamani walikuwa organic farmers. Na ile kitu walikuwa wanafanya anaenda kwa shamba, anaangalia ile mahindi zizaa mbele ya zile zingine. Anaifunga, anamaka. Hizo ndio mbele ya kutoa mahindi mahindi ile nyingine atatoa kwanza. Na inafungwa kitu tunaita manja, unaifunga vizuri na kupelekwa pale kwa jiko. Kitchen. Ile moshi ambayo inatoka kwa nini? Ina harden ile mahindi na hakuna wadudu wanaweza kuharibu ile mahindi. Hiyo ni kuamanisha hata ikienda kwa shamba wadudu watapata kazi ngumu sana kutoboa kuharibu ile mahindi. Maana already eh ni hybrid. When you grow the hybrid variety, you have to add fertilizer and spray chemicals to preserve them because they get affected a lot by insects and pests. When you try to grow the harvested seeds, they do not produce as much yield as the indigenous varieties. The skin of a pumpkin will be hard when the pumpkin is ripe. We use a fingernail and gently try to puncture the pumpkin skin. If the skin dents but does not puncture, the pumpkin is ready to pick. We then remove the seeds from the mature pumpkin and dry them for the next planting season. Kinini yake. Sasa hiyo ndio utaifadhi hatuendi kununua begu ya malenge sisi wenyewe tunaiyondia begu ya malenge. Mimi ile kitu nimeona katika mahindi ya kikamba 
The indigenous seeds that we grow are not easily punctured by insects, unlike the hybrid seeds. My work is to build the capacities of smallholder farmers so that they are able to uh, grow food using the seeds that are theirs, our seeds, our sovereignty, our pride, and that's what I'm talking about. Our seed, our sovereignty, our pride.